The last stoichiometry concept that we should discuss is this idea of how to handle these coefficients um, in terms of the number of moles of things that are required, right? And so I just picked this reaction out because it's really easy to uh, show you some of these stoichiometri uh, stoichiometric concepts. Um, let's say that I have, let's say I have, uh, I don't know, I know I have 10 moles of H2, right? And what I want to do with that is my 10 moles of H2, I know that I can make a, a certain amount of ammonia, right? I know that I have a certain amount of flour, for instance, that can make a certain amount of cookies, right? But it's probably a good idea to know how many cookies you can make before the people come over. In much the same way, chemists really um, like to know how much product they can make. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna show a dimensional analysis that actually involves these coefficients. And this thing is called the mole bridge. Uh, and we're gonna be doing some pretty simple kind of mole conversions, but these can get very complex. Um, I just wanted to show you kind of the, the gist of how to set them up. Um, and so we will. So let's say, right, I've got my 10 moles of H2. And really what I would like to know is I wanna know how many moles of ammonia I can make, right? That's the question. It turns out that those dimensional analysis techniques really are helpful when it comes to stoichiometry. What we're gonna do is we're once again gonna put this thing over one and we're gonna put a conversion factor here that allows us to get to that moles of NH3. If you paid attention when we did our dimensional analyses, every time that we wanted this unit to cancel out, we would put it in the bottom, right? So let's put moles of H2 down there. Where would you like to go? Well, I wanna know the moles of NH3. And it turns out what I really need is some sort of relationship between the moles of NH3 and the moles of H2. And it turns out that's the importance of this balanced chemical reaction that we've um, done a couple of times now. What we want is we want the numbers to just plug in nice and easy here, right? So I see a two for a coefficient in front of uh, ammonia. I'm gonna put a two there. What number goes with hydrogen? There's a three right there. I do that conversion. What this is telling me, obviously, is to take the top times the top and divide it by the bottom times the bottom, and that will tell me the number of moles of NH3 that I could potentially produce there. It's not entirely obvious without dimensional an analysis, or at least confusing yourself uh, quite a bit. But in the case of dimensional analysis, it's really easy to see that really what I have to do is do 20 divided by three, and I really hope that you guys can see this. I'm not sure that you are <laughs> seeing it, but let's do that anyway, and I'll put the answer uh, up above a little bit. Okay, so what I got is that if I started with 10 moles of H2, I could make about this many moles of ammonia. I give that thing the old sniff test. I recognize, okay, so ten, uh, three moles would produce two. So that's like, you know, two thirds of that number. Is that two thirds of 10? Yeah, just about, right? And so that sniffs right. Um, we'll do a couple of these in like quizzes and such. But one of the things that's important is that I could really use this kind of technique to calculate many different numbers for incredibly complex uh, processes, right? Which have a ton of different parts, right? Well, what if I wanted to figure out how much N2 I would use? Well, I would just put a, a one in moles of N2 right there and I would, you know, kind of keep track of it that way. So these kind of coefficients, they're much more than just balancing. It's actually a ratio that be, must be maintained. And that's kind of the key to stoichiometry is recognizing that really uh, most of the chemistry class, uh, even like a 200 level chemistry class is just learning how to handle ratios.